Good morning, folks. Second game of the Saturday games over in the Six Nations. It's Sunday morning here in NZ. 30 points to 24. France get the job done against Ireland. Bit of a weird game. Flurry of points at the start. Bunch of errors. And then halftime. Seems like Ireland did and buried. Bit of a comeback. But um, yeah, all a bit short for Ireland and uh, France. Maybe. Maybe looking like they can um, finally take that one step the side of the last couple of years has not been able to take. We'll go through the key events, some stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on the game. Um, but yeah, like I said, 30 points, 24. Game really did start with a flurry. Um, DuPont scores with a minute on the clock. Uh, it's, it's his relationship with Intermac, which is, um, which is beneficial, but I mean, it's Antonio who I think starts with us off with a, a nice carry. And um, yeah, Intermax pass puts puts DuPont into space. So France pretty much doing to Ireland what Ireland did to Wales a week before. So seven points to nil lead to France. And um, the game has kind of even hardly started. Um, Ireland did manage to go through a bunch of phases in reply, but eventually knocked it on. And um, interestingly, when France kicked it into an open backfield from that kind of turnover ball, they managed to kind of rush onto it. Was it Keenan who went back to gather it and then win a penalty at the breakdown that was not releasing? So all of a sudden, you're five minutes in and you're 10 points down from an Irish point of view. Or you're 10 points up if you're French. And the crowd's absolutely loving it. The crowd was in full voice pretty much the whole game, even when they were um, not looking that flash, the French. Um, that being said, right as you're looking like this start couldn't get any worse for Ireland, France struggle with the restart. And it's a, it's the number one theme of this game if you're a French fan. It's that you need to work on your kick receipts from kickoffs because they were brutal for the French this game. None more so than the first try of the game, which goes to Mac Hansen. He didn't get on the board last week, but he set one up this week. He does get on the board. And it's the weirdest try because... Essentially, Ireland kick it off. Hansen is chasing the kick. Uh, Pen O sees Hansen coming, but you know these days, if you're looking at the guy behind you who's running to come past you to get the ball, if you're looking at them and you block them, you get penalised. So Pen O does the smart thing and not look at him, but because he's not looking at him, he doesn't see Hansen just run right around him. And the guys from France don't catch the ball. It's a bit of indecision. They let it. Well, I guess it would have gone to ground, but. Hansen is there and he just canters over for a try. It is the weirdest try. A professional team should not be conceding that kind of try. That was really quite a weird one. So Ireland are back in it. 10 points to 7. They didn't need any build up. They just kicked it off and caught it, went straight over. So um, yeah, try time. Right, I had to go tell my children to settle down because they are pretty pumped maybe with this French win. I'm not sure. They literally just got out of bed. Um, what happens there? So it's 10 points to 7. And then um, there's there's another breakdown penalty with um, with Ireland winning line-out ball in their own half and immediately conceding one at the breakdown. So France 13-7 up. Then um, the French win a... Uh, a nice scrum penalty, which is no no easy feat. I mean, this is two of the best front rows in the world, I would say. South Africans are right up there as well. And they might have something to say about either of these packs. But certainly, um, both these front rows are packing a wee punch. And France got the upper hand early on that one. So, um, yeah, but then they had a, a shocking line-out throw. So, both sides go from kind of... Scoring a bunch of points early to just errors. It's line-outs, it's knock-ons, it's nothing is really fluid. Like after the game really coming out of the blocks and putting so many points on early, it kind of deteriorates a wee bit. I mean, Keenan puts a, um, puts a, a nice kick through. Um, uh, Villiers at one point grabs Keenan and grabs him into touch. I was thinking of Keenan gets one, a nice clean kick through and he gets, um, it goes dead. He finds field position, but the ball just keeps rolling and it goes dead. So it's back to where he kicked it. Um, Pena at one point, like he gets a pass and he ends up volleying it like it's a football game. He puts in a pretty nice offload at one point, like France were looking dangerous, but there's nothing much doing in terms of point scoring. 
There's not much of like, we're going to go through five phases here and then see what we can build. There's just not a lot of that. Neither side's got the, the edge to be able to do it. Both of the defenses are kind of shutting the other one down. Um, 40 minutes, though, Jaminet kicks a penalty right before halftime to make it 19-17. So 19-17 is a pretty solid lead at halftime. And France had way better in the first half. Run meters, 202 to 118. So not quite double, but they're getting there. Um, more possession, 51% is pretty tight, but more territory, 55% France. Um, penalties considered as concerning for Ireland, 8 to France's 3. So yeah, sure, France had um, def definitely had the better of the first half. Ireland really haven't been allowed to play their game, where they do go through those phases and they do recycle that ball quickly, you know what I mean? It just wasn't, it just kind of wasn't clicking for them. And then it seemed to get worse, because second half, Germany kicks another penalty. Um, that one was a really soft one from Ireland, just Conway in front of the kicker, like clearly in front, just um, just timing, just not quite there. So it's 22-7, which is a three-score game. Ireland are not looking in good shape, and then boom, they wake up, man. Two tries, pretty much quick fire. The first one, again, France conceding a penalty from the restart. They, they did not do well from restarts. Um, and yeah, they, they managed to maul that one over. Van der Fleer goes over. And then a few minutes later, Ireland go eight phases. Keenan sets it up with a line break. They get advantage. They opt for touch. Uh, this time, that's not a maul. They go through some phases. And then Jamison gives and Park just snipes. Goes clean through. So it's a quick fire double. And suddenly, from being three scores down, they are only a point behind Ireland. So it's suddenly just game on. To the... French crowds credit, they are still in the game. They're, they're still cheering their team on, despite the fact that they're absolutely on the back foot. Um, there does seem to be uh, a kind of settling in period, and then I guess maybe with France, with that crowd behind them, they do manage to get kind of a, a crazy try. <sighs> Neither side will be, again, that happy with the execution at times, and this one's... Ireland getting turned over in their own 22. Big Antonio, the big tight head prop, having a carry. And then, um, yeah, by the other prop, managing to go over like a phase or two later. Um, the, the ref got knocked on his backside like it was a, a proper crazy bit of French power to get over. But again, if you're Ireland, man, like why aren't you securing your ball and just kicking the leather out of it to, um, to get out of dodge? It doesn't make... Doesn't make a heck of a lot of a sense, and I guess that's what the um, the reviews will look at during the week. So, um, yeah, 27-21's looking like a bit more comfortable for France, but Jamina, again, he missed that conversion. It's the only kick I think he missed the whole game. So he misses that, keeps it as a one-score game. Um, the ref, as I said, he got knocked on his backside, so he had to change his whistle. We saw a whistle substitute, which is unusual. Um, 61 minutes, they checked an obstruction on Dupont. Which I'm glad they didn't call anything on because there was absolutely nothing in it. You know, sometimes star players, they do get a little bit of special treatment. Like Dan Carter, when he was playing, like sometimes if guys put a big hit on him, they get penalized. But otherwise it was kind of a fair tackle, you know what I mean? But uh, there was really nothing in it. It was Aki and um, Tyke Burton. And they didn't do nothing. It's not just normal rugby play. And... Uh, Thankfully, they did look at it for too long, but um, eventually they came to the call that there was nothing to it. So I was kind of pleased with that one from a refereeing point of view. I don't like the game being slowed down with all the microscopic looking at stuff, especially for that kind of thing, but I'm pleased they came to seemingly the right decision. Um, interestingly, on 71 minutes, Ireland get a chance uh, to get a penalty at France's half. They opt for the three, which is the conservative option when Ireland do have the momentum. So in hindsight... You may say they should have opted for touch back their mall to get them over because essentially the last two times they've gone for touch, they've managed to get a try one way or the other, but they uh, they didn't. So they opt for three and um, yeah, maybe that takes a little bit of the sting out of the momentum because then it kind of resets the play. Um, it looks like France has scored with three to go. That one all kind of starts from Mac Hansen. Maybe that's the one aspect of his game he needs to work on as his kicking game. He only kicked it once, I think. And it was a bit of a stinker, sets up France with some attack and play because he, yeah, he's in his own 22, kicks for touch, and it doesn't go very far. Um, yeah, so France have a good chance to attack. Looks like Jaminet's gone over Fiku with a kick in the build-up. It was some proper slick stuff. France getting the momentum back. 
But um, I think it was Sheehan, who's been playing more than half the game because Kelleher went off injured, um, manages to wrap him up and Jemine can't get the ball to ground. So France end up opting for three with like a minute and a half left. So it's 30 points to 24. Um, and that's the final score of the game. It's a weird end to the game where France have got the ball from the restart. They managed to actually secure... Although they first lost the ball from the restart again. Then I think they managed to turn it over, but then they kicked it back to Ireland. And there's like a minute or so left, and that's a bit risky to just kill a minute. You should be able to do a minute. That's when teams try to kill two plus minutes that they have inevitably uh, get penalized for sealing off or something. But France box kick it, so you're saying, right, Ireland, I'll give you one more crack at it. You've got to go like 70, 80 meters, but we'll give you a chance. And then Ireland kicked it back to France. I didn't didn't understand that. I mean, it's a high ball. Maybe it's like a contestable one. You're thinking you back yourselves to get it back, but they didn't. Yeah, I would have thought it's the time to keep ball in hand, but there you go. That's just me sitting on my couch. So it's a win. It's a bonus point loss for Ireland. So they're still in the hunt as long as France drop a game somewhere along the line, which they have done in recent years. Um, it was always going to be probably the toughest of their asks in Ireland's campaign this year. So they went close. But couldn't get it done. For France, they've put themselves in a good position to really kick on and put themselves forward for the Six Nations, which, they, as I said, they've been in this position a couple of times before in the recent years, and they've managed to kind of let it go with a result at some point. So we'll see how things play out. Um, final stats run meters 348 to 332, so not much in it. Possession, Ireland edged over the course of the game 54%, but France get the territory. 52%, so kind of, you know, pretty tight split. Um, clean breaks is three apiece. Defenders beaten is 14-12, so not much in it. Tackling percentage, both sides are at 91%. Um, Ireland have to make more tackles, 150 to France is 121. Um, penalties conceded 10 to 7, so Ireland with three more. Turnovers conceded 16 to 11, so Ireland with a few more, five more. So, um, yeah, a few of those kind of key areas not going their way. Lineouts cleaned up a bit in the second half. Um, France finished 12 from 14, Ireland 13 from 15, but both sides missed a few early on. Dupont, 46 run metres, a clean break and three defenders beat. I think Aldrich gets man of the match. He was carrying it all over the shop. Gillon had 16 from 17 tackles. Hansen has 73 run metres and clean break. Doris was more visible this week than last week for sure. 18 from 18 tackles. Um, although he did give away one of the penalties towards the end. Um, that you know made it a 30-point scoreline for France. But um, yeah, France in a couple of weeks will travel to Scotland. That's going to be a massive test for them. We'll see if this France side can take the step up or if it's time for them to have a wee banana skin game. Uh, and Ireland are home to Italy, so chance for them to reset. Maybe um, Andy Farrell changes the squad around a wee bit. We see some different faces, but anyway, it was a tight one. It was an interesting watch. Um, both sides genuinely could have won it. Um, bit of the decision making from both sides is a bit questionable at times. Um, flying start, bit of a messy middle. Ireland came roaring back after seeming to be dead and buried. So yeah, it had a bit of everything. No cards, thankfully. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.